the country is hemorrhaging its greatest resource, which is its people. When are we going to realize to put our resources in people and not in bombs? We can't keep putting up walls and laying down lines. I have no idea what it would mean to have to leave my homeland to be in the middle of an urban area without services, to not be able to work, uh, to not know if my children are safe, to be concerned about my sisters being raped. And now what they expected to improve has just turned worse than what was before. family, a family who is bro that is broken up. I, I see the woman and the child who can't go to school. I see and I feel the, the utter fear of people who do not know why all of their lives have been always affected in such ways. And I just see that the, the juncture, the fracture between the, this war that just causes no good and this human suffering is so immense. I think of mothers and fathers and grandparents and children who are leaving their homes because their homes are not safe anymore and who, who grew up maybe not like I grew up, but who grew up in a, in a way that they felt that home was home and all of that has been taken out from under them. And so <clears throat> they've had to leave their homes. That's the face I have. In April 2008, 18 Dominican sisters from congregations across the U.S. joined the Education for Peace in Iraq Center and leaders from a coalition of other human rights organizations in Washington, D.C., to raise the issue of the urgent need to resolve the growing Iraqi humanitarian crisis. They met with members of Congress and their legislative aides, the Iraqi ambassador to the United States, U.S. State Department and United Nations officials, as well as many more. They share their story to bring to light the suffering of Iraqi refugees and the importance of participating in actions of political discourse. It's really essential. It's the heart of our gospel work is to speak truth to power. We're talking about the human rights and human dignity of our family who is in Iraq and our advocacy is all about making sure that they have the rights and the dignity that they deserve as human persons. I would also say that one of the ways that I think our lobby days have been successful is that what we have found is that many of our congressional offices are a little bit less literate than I thought they would be on the Iraqi refugee situation. So what's great about Dominicans is that coming out of our background of preaching and teaching, we're actually able to give some instruction, to be able to give information in a way that is uh, non-threatening and in a way that is non-adversarial. And I think we not only had doors open to us, but ears and hearts open to us, which is very important for a ministry of preaching. I think it takes a certain amount of passion to really uh, speak the word of this in a way that will move other people also to want to pray about it and to act for it. Well, the forum was excellent. It was very well planned and executed. And we came to know what the United States government is doing through many, many of its uh, agencies to help this humanitarian crisis. What touched us so much, and you asked how I felt, is I think to actually see the heads of the, uh, the agencies that are working um, for human rela humanitarian relief and who just keep at it in the capital. That is very, it's good to have that personal connection. I'm always uh, very 
moved when I hear all of what people are doing around the world to try and help these people. So it was also hopeful to me to hear what is going on. I always end up asking myself the question, with all these people who care, how come there's so much that needs to be done? How come there's so much more that needs to be done? Not everyone in our uh, U.S. Uh, government is against trying to do something positive and to try to expand uh, and support the Iraqi refugees. It doesn't make any difference how this war started or what are all the points leading up to today, but as human beings, they are our brothers and sisters and we are one. I was just overwhelmed with the kind of suffering that those people are enduring and um, with the stories of hope um, that these people can maintain hope in the midst of all this was just tremendously uh, impressive to me. We have cases in our office that have been here for six months and they still have not received any aid. This is just saying, asking her to do whatever she can to help okay. expand the resources and expedite the resettlement of Iraqis to the United States. In other words, keep our promise. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jeff, and this is also a button uh, saying that we have family in Iraq. The Dominicans have been in Iraq for 800 years. It's also very strengthening to know that all of the persons involved in this uh, special Iraqi uh, advocacy days are united in this common mission. This common mission then leads to a common bond and it is extremely strengthening. We grew in our understanding together, actually. I think that when we enter religious life, we know that um, we're doing together things that we couldn't do alone. But when you come here and you see the other Dominican promoters and you recognize you've got an international family and you meet Iraqi Dominicans, it gives you a sense of the great call that we have to join together in a communal way to do actions that an individual could do, but not with nearly the effectiveness it makes a great deal of difference, I think, that we're wearing these pins that say that we have family in Iraq. And um, it just makes me very proud to be a Dominican and gives me a great sense of hope that together we can make a difference. I love that we were here together. Um, people from the west, from the central part of our country, from the eastern part of our country, speaking here to our Congress people about something that's been of grave concern to us for close to maybe more than 10 years. and. Um, We've been working really hard uh, trying to get our legislators involved in this issue. This is the first time as a group that we've come to uh, D.C. about this. So I'm really very grateful and proud of us and happy to be here. I was proud to be a part of it. I felt that it was a forum with a purpose and a determination and that they fulfilled that. And now it's a lot up to myself to carry on the message and to go home and make a difference. If we do not step up as Americans and also as an international community and fund programs for the Iraqi refugees, we are facing a, a humanitarian crisis of the gravest nature. We need to do some bridge building and, and making some efforts towards reconciliation. I, I'm proud of when I see uh, Americans that they're, they're giving volunteer hours here and volunteers hours there, but I'm disappointed when they don't engage in the political discussion, in the political analysis. I am so disappointed when they don't, when they take mainstream news and don't go any ask enough questions or visit, you know, see that they can do something. I think it's very important to educate those people that uh, we are in touch with day in and day out and to continue to uh, make this crisis known and also to take action steps like continuing to speak to our senators. We pushed for a couple said that they would give us a, a, a speech on the floor. We asked Senator Obama's office to be much more public. So I think our next step really is that we have to keep on top of their actions and hold them accountable and continue to pressure them to make this an issue that gets into the consciousness of the American public. And I remember when I was in Syria and Lebanon, one of the last things I said to families that I visited is, I promise that I will take your story to Washington. And I'm glad to some extent in these few days I've been able to deliver on that promise. Yeah.